Uh, starting with some comments by the leader of Iran's Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Said Ali Khamenei, saying if the United States lifts all sanctions, Tehran will live up to its commitments under the 2015 nuclear deal. بر اساس منطق آمریکا و سه کشور اروپایی که همه تعهدات برجامی رو زیر پا گذاشتند اینها دیگه حق ندارن شرط و شروط برای برجام تعیین کنند اونها به تعهدات برجامیشون هیچ عمل نکردند Ayatollah Khamenei said that it is Iran that has the right to set conditions on the nuclear deal as it has delivered on all its obligations. The leader added that Iran will return to its commitments after verifying that all sanctions have been practically lifted. He said this is Iran's definitive policy and the country won't drop the policy whatsoever. The leader stressed that the Islamic Republic won't listen to those beat in the U.S. or in Europe who talk nonsense with regard to sanctions. Ajala Khamenei made those comments in a meeting with Air Force personnel. Now, this is special uh, coverage uh, on the occasion. I'm joined uh, by a couple of guests. We'll have Barra Grossman, international liar, who's joining us out of Bali. And we'll also have Said Mohsen Abbas, journalist and a political commentator. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Uh, let's go to Bali first. Uh, Barry, you're an international lawyer, and so you know better than anybody else. When there is a deal and one party leaves the deal, and it's a multilateral one, of course, they leave the deal, they uh, reimpose unilateral sanctions, and now they're asking for Iran to take the first step. Is that logical? Well, it's, 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 it's not only not logical, it's completely absurd. Uh, to be clear, uh, there was pretty much universal agreement that at all relevant times, Iran was in full compliance with the JCPOA. It was also pretty much universally accepted that the United States, when it opted out of the JCPOA, it had no basis for doing so, and therefore it's a breach of the JCPOA. And of course, the unilateral sanctions, which it subsequently imposed and essentially lobbied uh, the rest of the world uh, to accept, are themselves squarely a breach of the terms and conditions of the JCPOA. Now, all of this uh, brings up what I think is a relatively obvious point, namely that the JCPOA was in fact never really about Atlantic world concerns regarding uh, an Iranian nuclear weapons program, uh, bearing in mind that all 17 agencies uh, comprising the intelligence apparatus in the United States had for pretty much a decade leading up to the JCPOA, each individual in, in, in classified sessions uh, saying that Iran didn't have a nuclear weapons program, had not made a political decision to start one at any time in the future, and that should Iran break out, it would certainly be caught out and stopped uh, before a deliverable weapon uh, could be produced. Uh, so I think the starting point here is that uh, neither the JCPOA nor the position that's now being taken by Atlantic world nations, and I, I, I consider uh, the United States and the European signatory nations to be equally complicit in this obvious breach, this illegal repudiation of the JCPOA. Uh, it's clear that this was not and is not about any genuine concern of Iran having a nuclear weapons program. The underlying concern is about resistance, about Iran's continuing resistance uh, to submitting to Atlantic world governments, to Atlantic world uh, uh, social programs, to the recognition of Israel and all manner of other policy matters, which of course in a proper uh, world are uniquely uh, with, uh, with matters for the sovereignty of the nation in question. So that's what it's about. Uh, the United States and other countries have made it perfectly clear that their concern is about uh, Iran's perfectly legal 
that their concern is about Iran's uh, refusal to recognize the legitimacy of Israel, and that their concern is about Iran's refusal uh, to embrace uh, Atlantic world foreign policy in the region, and mm -hmm. so forth and so forth. Uh, beside that, of course, we have uh, the long-running program being pursued by the United States and its allies to introduce what they would call regime change in Iran. That's where the problem lies. Mm -hmm. It's the Atlantic world nations, it's the United States, the UK, France, Germany, uh, uh, and the EU itself, which have been in breach of the JCPOA. And quite frankly, it's very, very reasonable of Iran and the uh, to indicate a willingness, rather than simply repudiating the JCPOA, to indicate a willingness to give those nations an opportunity to correct uh, their breach and get back to the program which they insisted right. on negotiating in the first place. Mm -hmm. Now, let me turn to London and ask Sayyid Mohsen Abbas uh, what he thinks, because uh, uh, Mr. Abbas, as a uh, uh, Barry also uh, rightly mentioned this is the opportunity that Iran is giving uh, uh, to the U.S. Uh, to uh, make up its mind and see if it's going to return. To the, if they want a return, they need to first do what they did to undo those sanctions they unilaterally imposed. Do you think that the Biden administration is serious? Because they were talking about us during the electoral campaign. Is Was that only publicity stunt or did they really mean that? I think it's been fairly clear. If you read into most of Biden's uh, present team, who actually, by the way, are uh, pretty much uh, linked to the team that uh, worked for Obama in, uh, uh, under John Kerry at that uh, time when he was in office, uh, they've given us all the indications of what the, the, the duplicity and of their coercive uh, Iranian policy uh, threats, basically. They were all out there, if you read between the lines. And uh, uh, it is really... Uh, uh, Biden, a Biden team that wants to hold on to what it sees as the Trump card, you know, the sanctions against Iran and its oil exports. And I think that their sort of narrow-minded, short-sighted uh, obsession with uh, economic sanctions as an absolute uh, necessity, given that they haven't worked, there's no sign that they that they're going to work, and the resilience of the Iranians has just simply uh, increased, and the the dislike and the exposure of the American imperialist policy has been exposed even more and in fact hardened uh, Iranian opinion against the JCPOA as well. Uh, you, you just have to say that uh, Biden's policy uh, is duplicitous at best and that mm. uh, at, at worst it's actually just a, a policy which is there to implement Israel's actual needs in West Asia, not the Americans' needs, because the Americans' public's needs uh, are, are not going to be met by wasting more uh, dollars and more American capital uh, in West Asia on useless wars and useless confrontations, which actually uh, advantage whatsoever. It's Israel. Let's bring Israel into the equation. It's Israel that is demanding that Iran's missile program be dismantled, as my colleague uh, very succinctly uh, outlined. It's Israel that wants Iran's regional influence to be diminished. What is that regional influence? It's the support of the likes of the Ansarullah, the oppressed people who are rising up against dictators and totalitarians in that region. Mm -hmm. It's helping uh, the likes of Syria, who were attacked from all sides by the imperialist forces uh, for uh, resource purposes and geopolitical overtaking of that region. It's helping Iraq, which is on its knees after invasion upon invasion. This is the Iranian policy in the region, which uh, irks uh, Israel primarily, and America does not in, in, in Congress, in uh, the American political system, uh, the bidding of the Israelis, and perhaps arguably also money power, because, you know, there are all sorts of other forces that are there also that actually quite make a lot of money out of all this, all this uh, weapons business, these nuclear arms. Uh, there is always a, a, a profit here in this, and it's usually the guys who are uh, in the money lending or the money money making business, the corporate transnational corporations. Biden serves those forces primarily. He does not serve the uh, the interests of the American people when he tries to play games around uh, nuclear issues. The real issues, I think, were, were given very very thoroughly uh, prior to my uh, my narrative here, and I, I think people need to take focus of the root causes of what America is okay. and. 
the Iranian people themselves and the, the Islamic Republic, uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, the wise men uh, and women in Iran, know full well that this is the case. They themselves internally have their debates going on on a political level. Uh, and uh, to trust uh, a wolf with sheep uh, is is probably quite uh, a, 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 an unwise policy. It's not something the Iranians will do. They will watch very carefully what Biden puts on the table. I don't think he's going to put anything uh, uh, significantly new on the table, which will allow, allow okay. the JCPOA to be really readopted, mm -hmm. which puts the region under significant threat, major threat for more wars, more more conflicts, and in fact pulls in the global economy at a time when it least needs it with all of the the, the virus and whatnot is certainly something that the world doesn't need and the world should get involved and actually uh, uh, try to do its best not to comply with American sanctions, not to be cowed mm -hmm. by American right. sanction fear mm -hmm. and really cut off uh, the American lead on such a, such a nonsensical uh, world uh, upsetting or, or destabilizing policies. Okay. Thank you very much for your contribution. Barry Grossman, International lawyer joined us from Bali, and Said Mohsen Abbas, journalist and political commentator out of London.